Hello everyone, welcome back to Aaron's Test Bench. Today I'm going to be doing a comparison test and review between two of the more popular micro UAVs on the market currently. The CX-10A, which is the latest in the uh, uh, very well regarded series of micro UAS. It sort of introduced the idea of having this clamshell of uh, uh, plastic around the flying circuit board. And a new upstart uh, from Spigo, the Pocket Drone Quadcopter 124 FQ777, which I will henceforth refer to as the FQ777. They're very similar. They have the same size engine mounts and the same size basic uh, airframe. They use the same props. The props indeed are, are uh, interchangeable, although I note that the Cheerson props are stiffer and a bit quieter than the equivalent from Spago. And if you switch them, it actually makes, makes this thing work a little better. So if you're buying more props, you, you might look for the Cheersons instead. But that aside, they are very similar. They both have headless modes. They both have two uh, speed modes. And uh, they both have uh, basic trim functionality. Although, uh, as you'll see, the Spago has better overall functionality in this regard. Uh, as far as cost goes, they're also very equivalent. They're about $15 in price for each of them. You could pay up to $20, depending on the site you go for. The controller is where things get quite different. The Spego has this actually quite nice controller. Also, it has a home for the quadcopter built right into the device, which is very, very slick. It makes transporting the quadcopter much, much easier. I really like this feature a lot, and I also find this controller, although initially confusing, you have to figure out which side this, the uh, throttle is on, to be a lot more comfortable than the, the equivalent from the CX-10A, which is a very small and very standard transmitter for a micro quad using AAA batteries. As far as accessories, the Spego also has a bit of an advantage. The Cheerson comes with the standard Cheerson accessory set, which actually uh, looks a lot like the accessory set that comes with a lot of other quads at this point. One set of props and a charging cable. The Spego, on the other hand, comes with a lot of extra stuff. First off, in addition to the charging cable, which it does come with, which I, I don't have with me at the moment, it looks the same as every other charging cable. And in fact, well, I'll get to that in a moment. It comes with a cage, which is a very nice accessory. It also comes with a couple of landing gear. I'd never used the landing gear ever. It does prop them up and make it look a little cuter, I guess. It also comes with two full sets of props, which is a very nice feature. And best of all, unlike the CX-10A, where you have to find a USB outlet somewhere, this device will actually charge off the controller itself. And this is possible because it stores four AA batteries in the controller. And here you are. The battery compartment is the same on both sides, and it uses full-size AA batteries, which is a really great feature. You won't have to break out your screwdriver to get in here too often either, because these batteries will charge the quadricopter Oh, I'd say at least 20 times. I, I know that I, I charged it about 10 times before, before I charged them the first time, and they'd only dropped down to about 1.3 volts uh, on the battery. So I probably could have done at least another 10 before it went down into the range where you should probably start charging your batteries. This is a, a, a pretty nice little package altogether, and allows you to be a lot more mobile while you're on the road. Now let me show you how the included cage works. It's actually pretty clever. All right, so here's the key. When you're doing this, you have to you have to actually get the tab up under the edge where there is a hole and then lever it in and then it clicks in place. It actually is perfectly molded for the aircraft and it's clearly not some sort of aftermarket accessory that they slapped into the box. It, it, it is very much something that they made to work specifically with this aircraft, which is a nice touch. I've also found it's pretty durable. I bounced it off a few things at this point. In fact, I've been flying this thing for a few weeks and it hasn't suffered any, any great 
uh, uh, damage to speak of. And it, it does seem like it's, it'd be pretty flimsy, but, you know, I think it actually works pretty well. So there you go. As far as accessories go, um, the, the Upstart definitely has the Cheerson beat. Now let's talk a little bit about flight characteristics. Here the Cheerson shines just a little bit more. The Cheerson, as you can see here, flies very smoothly. It just kind of glides along. It uh, doesn't have much in the way of nervousness. It doesn't do any sort of unpleasant drifting behavior. It just coasts along very pleasantly. It doesn't have the highest degree of control. Uh, I find that there are better quadrocopters for stopping, for instance, and one of those would be the pocket drum. The Cheerson has two modes. The first mode is slow and is good for beginners, and unlike the original CX-10, it's actually usable because you can stop. Uh, the, the first one had some difficulty stopping in mode one. Mode two is appreciably faster, but the yaw rate is the same. Uh, so don't expect to do any sort of tight spirals with this particular aircraft. It's just not really well designed for it. It's not to say it doesn't handle well, it handles very precisely. Now let's move on to the FQ777. Here I am in fact flying with the cage on, as I think is intended, and it flies just fine with the cage, so don't feel like you're pen penalizing yourself in any way by going for safety. It's also very fast. If you put it into mode 2, and here you can see, well, I had to film this outside because, well, look at that thing. It's fast. It's really fast. It goes really, really fast. So that is definitely something in the FQ777's favor. The yaw rates are, in fact, different between the two modes. And one of the two yaw... I don't know how to describe this. Essentially, the yaw rate in the left direction and the yaw rate in the right direction are different. And there is a yaw trim buttons on the controller, unlike most of these sort of controllers. You can actually uh, trim the yaw. But I don't find that it affects this in any way. So I effectively have four yaw rates. So I guess that's a feature. It's a little odd, certainly. Um, I've adapted to it, and it doesn't seem to have any s sort of other really unpleasant flight characteristics. I've also found that the FQ777 seems to have better range than the CX-10A, and I suppose that's natural because it has more batteries and it has more room for an antenna than the tiny transmitter that the CX-10A has. Like the CX-10A, the Spigo also has a headless mode, which I don't fancy, but essentially it makes it so that regardless of the orientation of the aircraft, the direction that you push on this stick remains constant. I suppose that if you're a beginner, it can be useful, but I, I never use these modes. Uh, it greatly limits the ability of the aircraft to uh, move smoothly through the skies, to be frank. And that's true of either of these things. Um, the other thing about uh, 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 that's different is that you, you just press the button here to activate the headless mode. Whereas on this device, you actually have to press the stick three times to go into the headless mode. I'm not sure which of those is better. To, to switch between the two modes, you still have to click here on the sticks. I suppose that one benefit is that you actually have two speeds for headless mode on the, the Spigo, unlike the Cheerson where you just have one, but I just never use it. And uh, also there's this button, which is an additional feature, <laughs> a return home feature. And in fact, when you press this button, as you can see here, the aircraft flies home. And if by home they mean directly at your head, <laughs> they, they really did accomplish that task quite well. It, it really should be renamed the fly at your head mode. <laughs> um, you have to be deft not to hit yourself with the, the, the drone when you push that button. So, so beware, beware the return home button. <laughs> it does work. It does in fact work. It flies right back at you. So um, good job in implementing that. All things considered, I have to give the nod to the FQ777, even though the CX-10A has somewhat more refined flight characteristics. I like this thing, and it's from a manufacturer that I know very little about, Spigo. Um, I'll certainly be looking into them more in the near future, because all things considered, this is a very nice little aircraft, and they've done a good job with it.
all around. Um, I like the controller. I like the aircraft itself. It seems to be very robust. The accessories are custom molded and work very well with the, the, the device. Um, although I, I question the utility of the legs. <laughs> The, uh, the cage certainly has a very high utility value, and including it is a very good thing. It's also fast, and it's fun. So the winner in this category for micro UAS currently, I would say, is the Spigo Pocket Drone Quadrocopter 124FQ777. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today, and I hope that this has been helpful. Um, to be frank, these are both excellent little devices. It's just that uh, the Spigo won out on having everything going for it. It, it really is a very good package all around. Uh, thanks for joining me again. And please subscribe, uh, not only for more review videos, but also for some beautiful aerial photography. Have a nice day.